All right, folks, uh, here we're going to start gluing the uh, rails, or the, the rocker rails. I don't know what you call the bottom rails, the part that's along the floor. Uh, we've got West System 105 and 206 slow hardener and some uh, the microfibers fillers for the thickened epoxy. So I'm going the normal route of regular thin epoxy on all the surfaces and then some thick epoxy and and then I put it in the form clamp the crap out of it let it sit overnight and here's kind of what we got from the first try so here's the first of the rocker rails after taking my sander to it like crazy uh, belt sander uh, so when I clamped it I didn't I didn't uh, compress, I, I had three clamps pushing down like this, and and most of them, of course, squeezing this way, but uh, I should have clamped it better vertically, because uh, in the end, this is probably gonna only be like an inch and an inch and a quarter thick rail, which I think is plenty. Uh, I was able to stand it up like this, and I could stand in the middle, uh, no problem. Uh, and so I think it's going to be plenty strong. It's just, it would have been nice to have them as fat as possible. But anyway, lesson learned. I'll, uh, so basically I'm flattening one side and then I'll run it on the table saw and, and rip it like that to get them uniform. And, uh, and the thickness requirement for the top here is the width of my uh the banding that i bought uh, i got some uh one eighth inch thick bronze silicon bronze band you know a bar basically and i'll just make uh u-bolt u-shaped uh, brackets out of it and that's going to be what's going to you know screw that into here and then have a bolt and then the vertical members supporting the structure so that's the wood, what it is. So here I'm going to show my process for gluing these suckers together. All right, here it is all glued up. Uh, nice and flat across here. So I've got five, five clamps uh, making all the edges even. And then, uh, you know, a slew of clamps clamping it against the curve so we'll have a good idea of uh, how this compares to the other one uh, tomorrow all right back on the uh, the uh, project with the uh, bendy wooden things so uh, I don't have a convenient design to show people but uh, these two pieces are almost 48 inches long and uh, they will serve as the main uh, brace for each end uh, going from side to side. Uh, the problem with these at the moment is that there's a check in this one and, I, and I've already uh, cut this profile here the way I like it. so. In effect, pieces like this are going to uh, are going to attach like that, and then I've got a long another brace here that will basically be like that to support the end, and uh, so there'll be some joint that that this wide piece joins into the thin piece and but I got to fix this check here and then I need to trace this curve onto this piece and this piece I only need I'm going to use the curve to get rid of these checks here so clearly this piece will easily get rid of the defect that's in the bottom of this board uh, the defect does not make it to the end here. 
as far as I can tell. And these are uh, these are black locusts, and I can't plane them with a hand plane because they, the tear out on these is just so significant if the grain at all changes and dives down. Uh, the tear out is just horrible. So I just chose to to take the, the thickness of the rough plank I had, sand it down till it's smooth. This is, you know, the intended thickness was an inch. This is just over an inch and a sixteenth. It's less than an inch, inch of an eighth. So I'm like, that's close enough. Nothing else depends on the thickness. So... Uh, I just sanded it with a belt sander to eliminate the tear out. Uh, otherwise, the boards look pretty nice. Uh, I think I'll peg to to strengthen this part here. Uh, I'll see if it'll break. If it will, I'll just glue it back together. But if it won't, I'll uh, I'll just peg. I'll put a bunch of pegs in here to uh, brace this. And that'll probably be fine. The only stress that this piece is under is is torsional to keep to keep this from racking this way. So the fact that there's a check here, uh, in, in my opinion, does not affect the strength of this piece for the purpose it's accomplishing. Uh, this is such a a much thicker and wider piece than I, I it needs to be in my opinion that uh, I'll just dowel this up to strengthen this so it doesn't break. Anyway, that's where we're at so far.
right, hello folks. Uh, so the last time I was recording, uh, my son and I were bending the uh, the seat part of the uh, rocking chair. Now this is going to be a rocking chair for my wife. This is after her birthday, so she knows she's getting it. I know I'm lame giving her a birthday present afterwards, but uh, we're close. So uh, I went ahead and made all the parts, cut them out, made all the joints. And so I'm about to glue them together. And here, I'm gonna give you a little preview of some of the joints here, or the parts. All right, so, so here, I'll give you some perspective here. So this is a rail that goes from the bottom of the rocker to the underside of the seat part. And this is the other side. Uh, this bar here is to prevent racking and a center support for the center part of the seat. There's three curved parts that support the trampoline. And then this bottom brace here just goes across to keep it from spreading apart. I'm going to epoxy all of them together. I made all these uh, mortise and tenon joints here. And uh, so these pieces of wood uh these are about an inch and a half wide and an inch thick of black locust and then uh these are about three inches wide at the top five inches at the at the uh, ends and this part here supports the bracket for the center of the rail the rails the seat rails are here in bubble wrap. These are the laminated parts that my son and I made. And then these are the bottom rocker parts. So everything is black locust except the seat, the three seat rails here. So I think this will be strong enough for pretty much anyone to sit in, any two people to sit in. So now I'm gonna glue it together and uh, see how it goes. I'm going to start by using a small batch of Fast Cure to glue this guy. And then because I only have one set of clamps that will give me the full four foot width, uh, I'm going to, I'm going to use Fast Cure on the, on the four joints on the ends. And I should be able to get that done before it uh, starts to cure. So it's pretty warm out now, probably mid to upper eighties. So we'll see how long this works. Uh, I should be able to get them, get them glued up and clamped, and then maybe later today, clamp the other end. We'll see. All right, that went pretty well. So uh, this this joint here wasn't as good as the uh, as the other one over there. Uh, I had a little bit of gap in here and here, and I was able to drip some epoxy into there and get it to uh, fill in a little bit. Any gaps that are under there, I'm uh, I measured and verified that that as I was that I'm putting this on that that these forks aren't spreading apart. So I know there's there's some voids in there, but that's just because I'm not great at chiseling. <laughs> uh, and then this joint here, uh, this one turned out much better. Uh, I'm going to be varnishing all this, so it's okay that I've got fast cure epoxy on it. Uh, some of the epoxy dripped out from my my adding it to the to the joint but that's fine uh and that gave me about a little over five minutes working time and that was probably the right amount of epoxy for for doing the other joints so uh i might actually make a double batch and add filler to it 
uh, again, because I just don't know how much, how many gaps or, you know, voids are in here. Uh, you know, there's some voids in there and stuff. So, and certainly, you know, it's not a perfect, perfect joint. So we'll see how that goes. And I'll see if I have enough time to do it. So again, it's kind of warm out here. I try again. All right, that uh, that glue up went pretty well. I think I had plenty of time. You might be able to hear the uh, the crackling of the epoxy. It's bubbling, getting very hot. I got to tell you, uh, I took the advice of one of the other boat building YouTubers that I uh, use or watch, and got and got these silicone uh, cups for mixing epoxy. They are awesome. Uh, if I use like a regular, you know, disposable Tupperware thing, they crack and got to throw them out. But these flexible, bust out the old epoxy, mix in the new. Works great. 